9. Craigie Clare Castle Craigie Clare Castle, also known as Dundas Castle, is tucked away like a crumbling fairy tale amid the Catskill Mountains engulfing woodlands in Roscoe, New York. Even now, the castle is shrouded in mystery and intrigue. No one appears to be confident in its history, with conflicting dates given to its construction. However, it's quite probable that the structure was initially a vacation lodge created by Bradford Lee Gilbert in the early 1880s. The name Craigie Clare is supposed to have originated from Gilbert's wife, a Scottish native who was reminded of a little village in Scotland called Craigie Clare. After Gilbert died in 1911, the land and lodge was sold to Maurice Sternbach before being purchased by Ralph Burt Dundas in 1915. Dundas began building the castle soon after, but he died in 1921 when it was still in the last phases of development. A year after Dundas died, his wife, Josephine Wurtz Dundas, was sent to a sanitarium despite never having resided in the castle. Muriel Harmer Wurtz Dundas, Josephine's sole child, received the money that had passed to her mother from her father. The castle keepers, who were serving as her guardians at the time, quickly took a considerable chunk of her riches. She eventually married and relocated to England, where she joined her husband on an expedition to discover St. John's gold. When the couple terminated the historians and scientists who were assisting in the quest, they replaced them with a mystic who had a willow wand. Muriel's mental stability was eventually called into question, and she was also committed exactly like her mother. The intriguing keep was transferred from the Dundas family for numerous short-term purposes. It was utilized as a summer camp for children for a period, before it was bought as a retreat by the Prince Hall Grand Lodge of the Masons, an African-American Masonic congregation from Manhattan. They eventually abandoned that purpose, and though the Prince Hall Masons still possess the building, it currently remains abandoned, decaying and brooding in the woods. The strange history of the place, including the failed attempts to use the property and its final desertion, have given rise to various stories surrounding the home. Some think it's haunted by the ghost of Josephine Dundas, who was allegedly imprisoned in an upper chamber. Others claim that on full moons, the three heart-shaped ponds on the site fill with blood. There is no proof that anyone was ever trapped in any of the chambers, and no one ever resided there for any lengthy period of time. However, no one can dispute that the location has an ambiance that may capture the minds of anybody who views the castle that stands alone in the mountains. 8. Henry River Mill Village the Henry River Mill Village in Hildebrand, North Carolina, first opened to the public in 1905. Like many gold panning villages, it promised jobs and wealth to prospective residents, and it didn't disappoint. Soon after, the village had grown to include more than 20 structures, sustaining a population that worked almost entirely at the mill. They began producing miles upon miles of quality yarn for almost 50 years. However, like most boom towns, this one was doomed to fail. As time went on, the town eventually became less practical and there was a surplus of unused yarn. By 1973, the Henry River Mill closed its doors. It didn't come as a surprise though, because the town was already dying. People started to move away to seek out better opportunities for work in order to take care of their families. Some of the townspeople stayed to support the mill, but as more and more people left, the nail went into the mill's coffin. In 1987, the village was officially abandoned. Today, it sits as a shockingly modern town from the industrial age, nestled into a private wooded area. Interestingly enough, the whole place is under the ownership of one man, 83-year-old Wade Shepherd. He lives locally and owns all 20 buildings. He bought them because he could, but also due to the growing safety concerns. The community was turning into an unpleasant place, attracting vandals and louts up to no good. In 2012, Fame and wealth brought a brief breath of life back to Henry River Mill Village. Hollywood felt the rundown village would be the ideal backdrop for the post-apocalyptic nightmare District 12 depicted in the film The Hunger Games. The village was featured in multiple scenes and was quickly visited by visitors and thrill-seekers who ran tours, treks, and sightseeing expeditions in an attempt to capitalize on the story's massive popularity. Mr. Shepard saw this as an opportunity to cut his losses and pass the town on to new hands for the future. He's listed the entire town for sale for a hefty fee of $1.4 million for anyone willing to pay the price. 7. The Winderborn Mansion The Winderborn Mansion in Boyd's Maryland was built by Enoch and Mary Totten in 1884. Mary Totten was the daughter of Timothy Howe, the senator of Wisconsin, and was very wealthy. Her father had a cousin, Elias Howe, and he was well known for perfecting the sewing machine. 
he created the Bobbin Winder, and that is how the house got its name. At first, the house was pink and had complimentary rose-colored trim. The house had the best gardens, with exotic plants that the Toddens had imported from all over the world, and there was garden staff to maintain it year-round. Many residents believe the mansion is haunted, due in part to the enormous tragedy that occurred there. All three Todden children got typhoid fever, most likely from contaminated drinking water. One of the kids died as a result of this. Another girl, Edith Todden, who went on to become a doctor, adopted a daughter who died after falling off a long banister in the house. Edward Ambula Pickrell acquired the house in 1929. Their son, Edward Pickrell Jr., purchased the house and resided there until his death in 2004. His brother, Paxton Pickrell, has been attempting to sell the long-dying land for years with little success. The home is now presently vacant, with no intention of restoring it, although the property still remains a photographer's paradise. The land is nine acres in size and features several old muscle cars in the backyard, as well as sprawling trees and flowers. It is also right next to Black Hills Regional Park and has a beautiful view of the river. The inside of the house is strewn with old furniture, letters, magazines, and garments. Although the house is abandoned, there are multiple no trespassing signs around the property, so it may be best to observe from afar. 6. Old Letchworth Village Cemetery Letchworth Village in Stony Point, New York, was regarded as a promising new trend for the care of the mentally ill when it debuted in 1911. Patients lived in their own village, equipped with farms, stores, and sometimes churches, instead of being restricted to a single building. Although the notion was appealing, overpopulation and a lack of funds resulted in horrifying allegations of mistreatment. Letchworth Village was ultimately closed in 1996 after decades of mounting criticism, including charges that the hospital exploited patients as lab rats for testing new experimental treatments. It now remains abandoned, with its deteriorating building slowly collapsing into ruin. Letchworth Village's land stretched well over 2,000 acres, yet they set up their cemetery nearly a mile away from its campus, far away from the public eye in the woods. The patients were buried, and their sites were marked with numbers, not names. It made people wonder if Letchworth had something to hide. A grassroots movement resulted in the installation of a memorial plaque at the cemetery in 2007. Over 900 patients' names are placed under an inscription that says, Those who shall not be forgotten, gathered from decades-old records and logs. Although we can never know for certain which burial numbers correlate to which individuals, the terrible and seemingly forgotten existence of those who suffered and died at Letchworth Village has now been honored. Would you explore some of these abandoned places? Let us know in the comments below and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. 5. Dogtown, MA Dogtown, Massachusetts is a true ghost town with a mysterious and interesting past. Suspicious vagabonds, feral dogs, witches, werewolves, old spells, and spooky dogs are all part of the folklore that surround this gloomy location. In 1693, settlers began moving to the area. They favored the location because it protected them from locals and pirates who didn't favor their presence and were wholly annoyed by the uninvited guests. Dogtown housed nearly a hundred families between 1750 and 1800. Following the War of 1812, most farmers left Dogtown. Fears of coastline invaders were fading, and new highways connecting Rockport and Gloucester were being built. This is when everything went wrong. As respectable families left, their abandoned homes began to fill with vagrants and unfavorable characters searching for a place to hide. Those without a family to follow, such as widows and some autonomous single women, stayed behind as well. Rumors spread that some of the people that had stayed began to practice witchcraft. Weird thundering sounds began to radiate from the village, and passers-by reported seeing flickering lights and individuals in the nearby forest. Dogtown, initially known as the Common Settlement, received its name from the town's wandering population of stray dogs. Several widows of fallen sailors and soldiers kept dogs for companionship and safety. Whether it was the loss of their owners or some other unfathomable reason, these dogs went wild and began wandering the surrounding plains. Some of the inhabitants had unusually frightening reputations. The queen of the witches was Thomasine Tammy Younger. Tammy resided on Fox Hill near Alawife Brook and was said to curse ox teams bringing fish from the local harbor as they passed through Dogtown. Only when the driver paid the witch's toll would they be left alone. Cornelius Black Neil Finson, a freedman, was the last person to live in Dogtown. 
During the severe winter, he was found half dead in a crawl space. In 1830, Babson was sent to take care of the state in Gloucester. However, he didn't last long, and he died not long after. During the Great Depression, Roger Babson, the founder of Babson College, hired out-of-work stonemasons to craft inspiring inscriptions on three dozen rocks in Dogtown. There are 36 of these strange and even disturbing messages strewn all over the region. A Boston citizen reported seeing a massive beast wandering the cliffs near Dogtown on March 17, 1984 during a full moon. He suspected it was a mountain lion, but local wildlife experts say there are no mountain lions on Cape Ann. A dead deer was discovered on Cranes Beach on March 21, and it had been ripped to shreds but not devoured. On the same night, along the Dogtown Road, two individuals saw a grey, enormous dog-like creature racing into the woods. Over the last few years, ancient dolls and stuffed animals have started to surface in an area of Dogtown. Tied-up baby dolls and melancholy-looking animals are featured in the collection. Though this is most likely the product of naughty teens, it's always possible that a less desirable individual or group has begun to use Dogtown for their own reasons. Dogtown in Massachusetts is now a 3,000-acre park where visitors can observe the village's abandoned basement tunnels and explore the trails and tangled vegetation that surround the tragic town. 4. Pennsylvania Turnpike The Pennsylvania Turnpike was called the Tunnel Highway when it was opened in 1940 because it traveled through seven tunnels. However, it was not very well planned. The roadway was reduced to a single lane in each direction passing through each tunnel. Within a decade, the turnpike was chronically crowded with frequent traffic backups and tunnel openings. The troublesome 13-mile, 21-kilometer stretch of road was abandoned in late 1968 in favor of a freshly constructed bypass. Since then, it's been closed to automobile traffic, and nature has regained the surrounding region. The once bustling road and tunnels ran right into the midst of the woods, resembling a scenario from a post-apocalyptic thriller. In 2001, there were plans in the works to convert the abandoned roadway into a biking route, However, it's now in the hands of a joint authority. Even in its current state, the road is available to the public for anyone willing to take their chances on broken pavement that hasn't been repaired in over 50 years. 3. The Bridge to Nowhere Located on the county line in Georgia, between Lowndes and Brooks counties is the Bridge to Nowhere. It hasn't been used in years, and it no longer leads to a specific spot anymore. The road that had connected to it before is long gone. It has been closed to visitors, but urban legends and rumors still circulate regarding the bridge, and it's said that multiple murders and suicides have occurred there. The bridge is said to have been finished in 1920. The prominent Blue Springs Resort nearby attracted a large number of visitors. By the 1950s, the resort's appeal had begun to wane due to multiple drownings that occurred at the natural spring near the bridge. There was also a car crash that damaged 50 to 100 feet 15.24 to 30.48 meters of the bridge's railing, and it was never repaired. Flooding washed down roads on either side of the bridge in the late 1940s, making it unsafe for travel. By the 1970s, the bridge was no longer needed and was closed to traffic due mainly to safety concerns. Despite the fact that individuals were not officially permitted to cross the bridge, it became a favorite hangout for youths. Graffiti adorned the bridge, some of it devilish in origin. It's also rumored to be a common meeting place for various cults. Many people claim that one time a husband pushed his wife off of the bridge, and to this day her screams can still be heard from below. In 2016, a movie was filmed there called Spook Bridge. The movie is about a local journalist who investigates the mysterious deaths of a few teenagers who fell off the bridge. The bridge has a bleak future due to the majority of locals wanting it down because it is considered dangerous. 2. The Draken The Swedish aerospace and defense company known as Saab designed and constructed a fighter aircraft called the Draken between 1955 and 1974. It was the first completely supersonic plane to fly in Western Europe. The Draken featured a revolutionary double delta wing configuration which had never been done before. A team of 500 engineers worked on the design and they created the prototype known as the Saab 210 and the test flight proved successful leading to the full-size design of the Draken. The outer 60-degree wing gave amazing performance at low speeds, while the inner wing had an 80-degree angle for high-speed performance. The aircraft replaced Sweden's first generation of jet-powered fighter aircraft, 
and it entered service with the Swedish Air Force on March 8, 1960. Early variants were designed solely for air defense operations, despite the fact that the type was largely regarded as a strong dogfighter for the time. However, because of budget cuts and costly maintenance expenses, the SAF decided to retire the Draken. Finland was one of the last countries to use the Draken aside from Austria. Located in the forest near an airport in Finland, an abandoned Draken with its wing cut off can be found. 1. 1976 Ford Anglia A driver who abandoned his broken-down vehicle in the woods 40 years ago was surprised to locate it again, in the exact same area where he left it. In 1974, Pekka Numelen of Mikolai, Finland, deserted his 1967 Ford Anglia in the woods outside his parents' house. Mr. Numelen then left the city, leaving the car behind. Years later, the man was discussing cars with his son Tommy when the topic of his deserted Anglia came into the conversation. They made the decision to go back to his old house to see if the car was still there, and much to their surprise, it was. It sat there, intact the entire time. Tommy said that a broken hose set off a string of events that included his father dumping water into the radiator, which froze overnight. The freezing water caused the engine to break when the man attempted to start the car. The windows and windshield were still in good condition. However, the automobile had sunk six inches into the earth, leading the father and son to believe that the undercarriage had decayed. The two planned to move the car eventually, but the keys have been lost for ages and they'll have to return with lockpicking tools. Which of these abandoned things would you like to have stumbled upon? Let us know what you think in the comments below and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and see you next time.